Thank you for coming by and watching this video. If you enjoy this video or feel you've benefited from it, consider going to patreon.com forward slash newbiehack and support these efforts. You'll have access to 20 of my latest videos that hasn't been published on YouTube yet. Since I'm probably gonna put the LCD in this location here, I'm gonna first wanna take these wires out. And I think that in the last video, I said that I'd probably just have sort of an L shape going. And I'm going to take these completely out. And I can easily just connect this VDD to this one here. If I remove these wires, then that means that the power is only going to be able to go to this rail here and it'll stop here. It won't be able to get transferred to this location and to this location. So what I can do is when I take these off, I can have the power going from here to here. So this power here is the same as this one. So I can just do a, I can just jump from here to here and the ground, I can jump from here to the ground rail here. And that will fire, that will provide power to this rail, to this rail, and since these are connected, to this rail. So let's connect the VDD from one side to the VDD on the other side. So we have the pin number 64 connected to pin number one, which is the positive voltage from one side to the other side. Now we need to take the ground and put it to the ground rail on the other side. I formed this wire so it would easily be seen on video where it's coming from and where it's going. So it's going to the second pin, second tie strip, and then it's going to be plugged in on the negative rail here. So we have the positive going to the positive, and we have the negative here going to the negative rail on the other side. This is the LCD that I'll be using, and I do actually have the 15 and 16 on the board, and my kit actually has these already installed, so I'm not gonna snip those off. I'm just gonna make room on the breadboard to allow for these two pins to be inserted into the breadboard. And since I'm making modifications to the breadboard now, I might as well make room for it. It looks like I'm gonna be conflicting with the pin 32, which is right here, which is the VDD pin, which is the positive pin. So on the breadboard, I'll probably take both of these here these two that are tying these two tie strips together and I'll bring it over maybe a couple tie strips so I can have a little bit more room to play with. I'll start with this one here. This one is going to the negative rail. So I'll just take a long one here and just pass it to tie strip number 10. Then I'll just move this over to the same tie strip. Now I can move the other one and do the same thing with the other one. All right, so we have the, the positive supply, pin number 32, going over from this tie strip to number 11 tie strip and going to the positive rail. And we have the ground, number 31, pin number 31, going to tie strip number 10 here and then going to the negative rail. Now we have more than enough space to put the LCD in and also maybe put a potentiometer in there. I'm not really sure. We'll see when it comes time to putting in the potentiometer for the contrast pin. Before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the programmer and turn this on just to make sure that it has the last thing that I programmed and everything works as, as expected. Okay, plugged in and I got the two lights, two LEDs on, which matches the character D correctly. We can go ahead and try putting another character. Let's go A again, compile it, then program. Okay, it works. So the changes that I've made to the circuit and the breadboard are correct, work fine, and we can move on. Now I'm gonna add three more LEDs to this location. I'll probably reassign the pins where I'm outputting the, the byte to these pins here and then reserve these two pins and the next pin here for the enable, register select, and the read write, since those are the next pins on the LCD anyway that are located in this area. Fortunately, since we used defines and we wrote the program appropriately, it should be pretty easy to reassign them. I'll go ahead and add three more 
resistors first and we'll add three more LEDs the next LED making sure the flat is on the side of the, the negative same with this one the flat is on this side here close to the negative and the last one so we have all of the LEDs put in if you notice the LEDs are they're all sort of diagonal in there it's kind of hard to, to see which one is next this one is the first one and then this one and then this one here and then this one here and then this one here and here 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 and then here so it's it's kind of hard to see which one is is in sequence I could share some some holes on the negative side so it doesn't have to go at so much of an angle so I might do that one example would be let's take this one out here I can just take this one uh, let's see maybe yeah and share the same hole so I can keep doing that with all of them pretty easy to squeeze them in there. The next one is all the way over here. Since LEDs have such a small and thin lead, two of them can easily go into a single hole on the tie strip. Okay, so that's a little bit better. Not this one here. This one still needs to be over here. Okay. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The only thing to remember is to have the positive lead of the, the LED on the proper tie strip but it doesn't really matter which position on the power rail on the negative side of the power rail that they land now that we've done that i'm going to plug it in again just to make sure it works and it works okay at the program we'll go to the lcd function dot h since we need to adjust the pin numbers we're using 9. On GPIOC, we're using 6, 7, 8, and 9. And on GPIOB, we're using 12, 13, 14, and 15. Let's take a look at what new pins we'll need to use. Here we see that we are using the 12, 13, 14, 15 on port B, and 6, 7, 8, and 9 on port C. And we're going to be using 8, 9, and 10 on port A. And 8, 9, and 10 is actually going to be We'll be using these for the byte now instead. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this will be for the byte. Let's see, where is enable? Okay, so then it's enable, read, write, and read, register, select. Enable, read, write, and register, select. So we'll make this one for enable. This one will be enable, read, write and register select. So D0, the D0 pin is going to be going to GPIO B15 since this is the, let's see, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So D0 is going to be 15 on port B. D1 will be 6 on port C. 2 will be 7 on port C. And this is going to be 8, port C, 9, port C, and then we have 8 on port A, 9, port A, and 10 on port A. Now let's set up our enable, read, write, and register select. So we're going to put in three more defines. 
LCD enable and we'll make that one 14. Wait, this is pin. Let's say the E pin 14 and LCD E port will be GPIO B. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do longhand here. Later on, I may not know what that E means. So let's do the read write. Pin is gonna be number 13. Read write port will be GPIO B again. And then the register select is the last one. And that is pin number 12 port and that's look at this where did I have this here GPIO B and the port here will be GPIO B now we have the defines complete hopefully we can go ahead and initialize the ports for the new pins that we have so we should have three new pins I'll go ahead and just do three three of these and the enable pin I'm just going to do a copy and paste, enable pin, and then oh, we can do this way, LCD, enable port. Okay, and we have the LCD read write port and LCD read write pin. And the last one is the LCD register select port and the LCD register select pin. And we're just enabling those pins on the microcontroller to be set for output. Let's just see if those pins work. We'll light them up and make sure that we have correctly assigned the pins. We should get the letter A again as an output but in different pins instead of the pins that we used to have. And then we should also see the enable. Let's go ahead and make the, um, we'll use this one. Uh, we'll just copy and paste it from here. And we'll just set them to output. So we'll put this in the, the main dot C and we'll just manually set them to output. So let's do LCD enable port and LCD enable pin. It's interesting that it's not giving me the IntelliSense. And we'll just put a one here. True. LCD read write port. Read write pin. Make that a one and LCD register select port and LCD register select pin. So let's do a a build and see if we have any errors. Actually, we didn't save the LCD functions, so maybe that's why I didn't get the. The helping. Let me try doing this. Yep, that's why. So this is the port register select port. I'm gonna go ahead and do them again just to make sure I didn't get any typos. LCD read write port and LCD read write pin. Okay, and since we're just putting one here so we can light up the LED, since in the LCD functions, the bit state is just either a one or a zero. So if it's a one, it's going to turn it on. If it's a, which is a bit, bit set and re reset register. And if it's a zero, it's going to turn it off, which is a bit reset register. So let's see if it builds. 
Okay, it builds correctly. Let's see if it actually executes on the microcontroller correctly. You can see we have the same state as before because we didn't do any programming yet. So I'm going to program it. Okay, looks like we got the correct output. These three pins we wanted on this one, this one, and this one. This is the, which one is that? Yeah, this is the register select, this is the read write, and this is the enable. Those three are on. And we have the, the A, which is a one in this position, a bit high in this position, and a bit high in this position. So we have the correct output, which is good. Now let's turn these off just to make sure that we have it set correctly as well. Actually, I'm just going to comment out those so they won't be executed. Okay, we have the correct output showing just the A and those are off.